Hey Dunk, wanted to show you this at my parents' house. Um, we got Mr. Pepper over there. He's he's on a leash tied to a pole, so he can't he can move around pretty good. But um, I'm not letting them meet face to face. Zam, come. Good boy. <clears throat> not letting them meet face to face. Now I trust Zam's recall enough to come back when I ask him to, um, even with the e collar if I need it. Good boy. But um, what I want to do is make sure that when I'm introducing dogs for the first time it's under control it's not this big rambunctious meet face to face all this energy because Zam's showing me a lot of intensity but he's not showing me necessarily aggression um Zam come good boy good boy he's like super excited because there's another dog here and that is what can lead to um reactivity and and fights right off the bat if you have two dogs that are explosive and and very intense zam come come good boy let's i'm gonna just go make sure mr pepper is untangled over here <laughs> so what i want to do is make sure that both dogs are able to be controlled and we can come here come here pepper <laughs> and so i don't have anyone else here right now so pepper's just in instead of asking somebody to hold him I just have him on a back tie, um, a long leash attached to something so I can control where he is and uh, I can control where Zam is because I, he can listen and he can do all this really good obedience like the recall and everything. Now if I didn't trust him 100% I would have him on leash. Zam come. Good boy. Good boy. So anyway, um, what we can kind of do to slowly introduce them is just let them be neutral in the same yard together and not have this big face-to-face -face interaction right off the bat. So let them kind of get used to each other's presence. We let them kind of, um, you know, I'm not going to let Zam rush up to him, but you know, this getting a little bit closer at a time where it's more neutral and they're just kind of sniffing around each other and not really. Zam, come. When they show too much interest in each other, I'm just going to call him away. And I do that a bunch of times, like just kind of bungee him back and forth until he doesn't, he, he's more neutral to the fact that there's another dog here. Once they're both more neutral to each other, and you can see his head is low, his body language is a lot different than when I first brought him out, which I didn't really show you. But I don't want to see this big intensity um, of seeing that there's another dog right off the bat. I, that's when I don't want to introduce dogs. I want it to be, okay, there's a dog here. Let's kind of calm you down a little bit first, and then we'll let you guys meet. Um, once you've both kind of accepted the fact that there is another dog here. Now Pepper has a little bit of training, but <laughs> he's a good boy, but um, he can be pretty excited about dogs too. Zam, come. Come. Good, good boy. And so, uh, because he can be so excitable, um, I don't really know him super well around brand new dogs, but because he can be pretty excited, he's always been super friendly like with my dogs, but lots of playtime, lots of puppies. He's definitely young and has a lot of energy. Good boy, Zam, come. And so I just want to make sure that doesn't rub Zam the wrong way. So if we take this time to introduce them like this and calm them down and do some obedience with Mr. Zam and just keep him Pepper nice and calm and under control, even though he doesn't have a lot of obedience, just keep him safe and at a very specific <laughs> point where I know he's going to stay. So on that leash um, <clears throat> or, you know, if you have somebody have somebody hold the leash and just let them be nice and calm and let them greet each other that way. Zambo, good boy! So as I kind of walk and get them closer and closer, you can see Zam's, he's, he's getting closer but he's not rushing up in excitement and that's what I want to prevent. Good, good, good dogs. So he's kind of just avoidantly sniffing. He, well, he's also sniffing where Pepper peed because Pepper peed out here. Zam, come. Good boy, good man, come. Good, good job. Because, you know, like I said before, dogs, whenever they meet face to face, they size each other up right off the bat. Sam, come here. And I don't, I don't want to give them the chance to size each other up. I want to say, hey, like, I'm in control. You guys don't need to decide this hierarchy for yourselves because it doesn't matter where you are. You're both underneath me. <laughs> oh, Pepper. Oh, the Pepper. I did a little bit of training with Pepper when I was here over Christmas. Sam, come. Good boy. Good boy. So, um, with the intensity that I'm seeing with both of them, just because Pepper isn't a dog that Zam has to be okay around long term, I probably won't let them be off leash, un you know, together, um, unsupervised, you know, while I'm here, you know, till tomorrow when you come and get him. So, um, yeah, I'm not gonna really risk it or anything like that. It's just a good way to introduce Zam to the idea that there's gonna be new dogs in your life and Zam come good just because there are doesn't mean it's a chance for you to 
get crazy and stupid and um, don't lick his pee. You're licking his pee. You're weird. You're gross. No, he's just a male dog. Hot pepper. Hot pepper. Anyway, um, just wanted you to kind of see this, see that it is possible. And you know, if this is a dog that he does have to be around, you know, um, family's dog, friend's dog that you're gonna try to introduce him to to be around long term. The next time we do this, you know, maybe we have pepper, you know, it's always helpful with other people, but have other people holding the new dog. You are in charge of Zam, keep them on leash. Like let them come up and meet and then call them away right away. That's the next step is letting them actually meet. Zam, come, come, good boy, come. Good boy, Zam, come. There it is, good job, Pepper. So that was, I let them get a little bit closer there to kind of, like I said, that two seconds, like let them greet, one, two, call them away. Good boy, Zam. Anyway, um, this is probably good for one session and the next time I bring them out, um, is when we would let them actually meet and let them interact for a second or two and then call them away But that might not happen today just because this isn't a dog that he needs to be friends with long term Sam come Good boy come Come good. There you go. You better do it. Good job. I know pepper pots. Good boy Zambo So dunk this is kind of your next step um, I've asked Zam to foos and I let pepper um, free of the back tie and just walking around. Poofs. Good boy, Zam. Poofs. I know. Good man. So Pepper is just free. He still has a leash on just in case. Oops. But based on what I've seen, um, Zam is really responsive to corrections and he's calmed down a lot from initially seeing Pepper. And so I've let them both have a little bit more, or I've let Pepper have more freedom, but then I reined in the control on Zam, where now I'm asking him to foos and stay right here next to me, even though there's another dog wandering free. Foos. And this is literally the first time I've had them out together. Foos. Good boy. So I think a lot of what you're dealing with with him is like, he is a big, intense male. Good. But I think there's a lot of frustration. Um built up with him doing this you know all these you see that reaction on leash a lot when he sees another dog and there's that tension from the leash and you know it's it's barrier frustration it's barrier aggression where he feels that tension and it's almost like holding a big tough guy back in a fight and saying and he's saying you know let me at him let me at him he feels really big and tough because he can't actually go up to that dog plots and that causes more frustration huh pepper come on but oh plots plots good boy but when we ask him, you know, to think and do obedience around that thing, um, he actually does pretty okay once he calms down. So there's this big explosion if you let them meet right away, or if he's able to see a dog and doesn't get to go and, you know, greet it or whatever. And of course, we have the chickens out too. <laughs> he doesn't care about them. But anyway, when we kind of ease him into this interaction with another dog and make him think and make him do obedience, Pepper! Pepper, good boy. Um, it, it really helps calm that adrenaline down so that he doesn't, you know, get explosive. And you know, the other dog is, is the same too. Now Pepper's chilled out a lot. He's pretty young. So when I first met him, he was a little ball of energy and he was kind of a lot with dogs. So he's tuned down. He's toned down a lot too, at least with me. I don't know how he is with my brother, but <laughs> he does good with me. So anyway, you can see Zam fixating a little bit on him there. Just gave him a little tap to correct. Now as Pepper walks towards him, Pepper, come here. I'm still managing the situation a lot where I'm not gonna really let them meet face to face. So I can call Pepper away um, and make sure Zam stays in that plot. If, if, Zam, if Pepper rushes up to Zam, I'm gonna not force him to stay in that plot. I'm gonna call him to me and um, not make him stay there. Cause like I said, that's a very vulnerable position. He, shouldn't have to stay in that down position because that's going to cause a lot of frustration too if he's forced to stay in that down as a dog rushes up to him so i'll either body block so pepper can't go up to him or you know whatever dog it might be you know on a hike if a dog rushes up you body block so the dog can't get up to him or i call zam away zam come and he's still over there this is just an example and then i'll foos him zam foos good so i can move him away from that other dog or keep him moving pepper pepper's tired <laughs> good anyway just wanted you to see this I'm really proud of him he's he's a good boy he can do this stuff it's just it just takes some thinking on his part to be able to calm down and not be stupid around dogs hi huh, Zamboni you're a good boy my oh my gosh he's my dad's favorite my dad is a new best friend <laughs> he loves them anyway he's a good man good job mr. pepper 
Come on, Sam. Good boy. All right, part three here. Um, giving them both a little bit more freedom. Let Sam kind of be out of a command and just hanging out. Um, he's come up to Pepper a couple times. He sniffed him a couple times, come up face to face. Um, and I've recalled him, so right here. One, two, Zam, come, come. Yeah, good boy. You don't get to be into his wiener. We don't get to. So if I say come, doesn't matter what you're doing, you gotta come. No sniffing, no lingering. It's that lingering where you see tension built up. Good, come on, Zam. Good boy. I'm just gonna kind of keep him moving. Not in a command or anything. Good. Good boy, Zam. Come. Good. Good job. And now you see Pepper's body language with his tail super high. He's pretty dominant as a dog as well. Zam, come. Good boy. Good. Come. So when I see a dog that's um, equally as dominant, um, and, and uh, he's pretty possessive of his people, people that he knows. Pepper is. So he's possessive. And so if Zam comes up to me and gets affection from me, Pepper wants to come in and intervene. So giving affection is a big thing too. If When you are introducing dogs um, for the first time and uh, one of them isn't so good around dogs or two of them might not be so good around dogs, um, you don't want to go down and give affection to either of the dogs because then you become, you don't want to have high value items. So that's kind of a general thing. You don't want to have high value items. You don't want to have leashes be tight so the dogs shouldn't pull each other to meet each other. No high value things like treats or toys or anything. You can see there's not really anything out here. Um, and then you don't want to get down on their level. A lot of people want to do that and go, go down and be, oh, hey puppy, it's okay, and try to kind of comfort them. But then you become that valuable item and then some dogs want to guard you and, you know, be possessive over you. Zam, come. Good man, good boy. So you always want to be the leader, be in charge and dictate what's happening and not become that source of an object that either of the dogs can guard. So, yeah, good stuff. Good job, buddy. Pepper. Come on, Pep Peps. Good. The boy Zamboni. And I keep moving. That's a big key, too. I don't want to stay still myself. Good. And I don't want the dogs to stay still and get stiff when they meet each other. So if I keep moving, Zam, come. I can kind of keep this distance and keep them moving as well. And movement is always a good thing. So if they're moving, they're thinking, you know, Zam is so in tune with following me. Pepper is not. Pepper doesn't care <laughs> about me as much. But um, with Zam, I, ca I can walk away and he, I didn't even call him there. He's just like, oh crap, she's moving that way. I better follow her just because he's so tuned into following me. He sees that chicken. Come here, buddy. <laughs> um, that's all I did with the chickens too, is just the same recall. If he got too interested, call him to me. If he doesn't come right away, use the e-caller. Huh, bud? Zambo, good man. Good job, buddy. Anyway, I thought you'd like to see all these. <laughs> He's just like weirded out about the chickens now. What are they? They're little dinosaurs, huh, Zambo? Come here, buddy. Good man.